Hello again, this is Frank Owen, PolyX Engineering, San Luis Obispo, California. Welcome to another video in my series of videos on uh, control systems engineering. Uh, in this video, we'll look at an example of a control system. Uh, actually, this uh, is an example taken from uh, material used by my colleague in uh, Italy, in northern Italy, in Bergamo, uh, Professor Fabio Previdi. Uh, we had an earlier video in this series uh, called Control Loop Anatomy, and in that video I described the various parts and pieces of a control system and how they fit together. Uh, there are four, uh, sometimes five, depending upon how you count them, uh, in the control loop uh, controller, shown here, uh, talks to the actuator, <clears throat> the actuator talks to the plant, uh, then uh, that produces some value, it could be speed, pressure, whatever, which is sensed by a sensor and then fed back uh, to what's called a comparator. It's just simply a sum <clears throat> that compares the desired value of speed, pressure, height, uh, position, whatever you want it to be, with uh, the uh, actual value and then takes action. I'm not going to go into that because that was the subject of this video on control loop anatomy. Uh, what we'll look at, as I said before, is a real control system that was developed in the Laboratorio di Automatica at the University of Bergamo in northern Italy. <clears throat> uh, one problem that will become uh, somewhat evident here is that when you go look at uh, a real system, a system is not arranged nicely in uh, this uh, diet like like this diagram up here, often there's a lot of wires, motors, sensors, uh, etc. And one has to sort out the, uh, uh, the parts and pieces. Um, and um, so uh, what you need to do is have this um, diagram firmly in mind when uh, you go look at a new system. The physical details of the system hide this structure uh, not intentionally, it's just the way that it works out. <clears throat> uh, but um, you uh, keep this um, loop structure in mind when you approach the system and you need to uh, uh, sort of impose it on the system. So what this uh, example is, is it's an autonomously guided vehicle uh, that's shown here. Uh, the vehicle is just this uh, cart, as we'll see. And uh, it is to proceed along a path that's described by a magnetic strip that's been placed upon the pavement. And what this represents here, well, here's the vehicle first off, and then here's the magnetic strip. And what this would represent, since uh, the strip is not going straight ahead but turning off to the right, oh, I say that it would represent a left turn, it would actually represent a right turn. Uh, now, what we need to do is identify the sensors here, the various sensors here. Uh, they're the easiest to identify often, and actually in this case we have three sensors. We have an array of sensors. We have uh, some magnetic uh, detectors, as we'll see. Uh, we call one the left detector, one the center detector, and one the right detector. So as shown here, uh, the center detector is right over the magnetic strip, and that's basically where you want it to be. Uh, oftentimes, uh, it's easy to answer the question of where the controller is because the controller is often in a microprocessor. And actually, on this vehicle, as we shall see, there's a cabinet in the rear of the vehicle uh, that has the controller and all of the electronics in it. Uh, the next question, probably to answer, uh, is what's the plant? And actually, we're steering the vehicle. Uh, the, the vehicle is thus the plant. It's the position of the vehicle that we're trying to control. And uh, oftentimes the hardest thing to identify is the actuator. Uh, and we ask the question, how are we going to control the uh, position of the uh, plant or the vehicle? And in this case, what we have is we have on the rear wheels uh, two independent drive motors. So uh, if we turn uh, uh, the left motor, for instance, faster than the right motor, then uh, that will make the vehicle turn right. If we uh, um, supply more uh, uh, power to the right motor uh, than the left motor, then the vehicle will turn left. 
Uh, this is looking at the sensor setup from the front, uh, just to give a little bit more detail. Uh, the card is above, and then uh, on the pavement we have this magnetic strip, and then we have our three sensors as, as was shown on uh, the previous diagram. The sensors sense the, mag the magnetic uh, field, so what you're going to get from the sensors is the strength of, of the magnetic field. What you usually get from sensors, whether they're measuring pressure, um, position, um, height of a tank level, is you get a voltage out, you get an electrical uh, signal out. And uh, that electrical signal, the voltage or the current from that signal will be uh, determined by uh, how high something is, how much pressure you have, or proximity in this case. Okay, this shows the uh, vehicle uh, move forward a bit. So the vehicle was going straight forward. Uh, previously, uh, there had been a straight section of a magnetic uh, uh, strip on the pavement. So the cart is proceeding straight ahead, but now we want the cart to turn right. Uh, so the cart has moved straight forward, and that's made it so that uh, the right sensor now uh, turns on or indicates positive and the center sensor it has turned off or indicates negative. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to supply more power that could be voltage or current uh, to the left wheel to make it turn faster and less to the right wheel to make it turn slower. Uh, and that uh, proceeds until the center sensor, so the, the, the cart will start to turn right, and the center sensor will again move over the magnetic strip uh, and then the cart will proceed straight ahead. The same thing will happen again, and it'll make another little turn to the right, and that will proceed until the uh, uh, cart does make a 90-degree turn to the right, and then uh, can continue on uh, following the magnetic strip after that. So let's look at a little bit of the hardware, and this <laughs> shows uh, the uh, uh, fact that you can have a lot of details in a system that really hide that... Uh, loop structure that we saw at the first. Uh, we have our sensors down here on the bottom, that array of three sensors that sense the magnetic strip. And then uh, this this is not a very good picture, but you do have two uh, independent motors in the back that are driving those wheels. The front wheels are just simply casters, uh, like on a uh, grocery cart. So they, they, just, they uh, just turn as needed. Uh, they're not driven. Uh, <clears throat> this is the controller. <clears throat> like I said, uh, the controller is fairly easy to identify because usually it's a microprocessor or a, uh, or a, a computer. Uh, so we have a microprocessor in this control box uh, that was on the back of the cart. And uh, that's where the uh, software is that uh, takes the signals in and then determines uh, what the output should be to make the uh, uh, cart steer itself along the magnetic strip. And then you have a lot of other stuff in here which uh, is needed to make the system work, but uh, one uh, problem that we have with that is that um, oftentimes it hides the details of the system. Uh, you know, what's the controller, what's the actuator, what's the plant, what's the sensor. Um, you can see here, actually, if you look closely, it says left motor here and right motor down here. So these are motor drivers for the two motors in the back. Uh, we're using differential steering to make this uh, cart follow the designated path. Uh, so I've made this point before, <clears throat> but let me make it again because it's very important. Uh, control systems have lots of details, as you can see uh, with this control cabinet up here. And the moral of the story is really to keep that original diagram in mind when you're uh, analyzing or designing a control system so that uh, you uh, are aware of that uh, basic structure that is common to all uh, uh, control systems. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope to have you again as a guest in another video in this series.